Jeff Robinson, and then he has another one where he corrects his spelling. Would uh, would thymulin or thymulin be beneficial uh, peptide for those with CIRS? Isn't CIRS a chronic uh, mold problem? Yes, exactly. And so you still have to go through all the pathways treating mold that you would normally do, things like binders and uh, other anti-inflammatories. But most of the time, they're going to require you to start with something that's going to dampen your immune system. Most mold uh, physicians will start with something like uh, uh, those resolving mediators that you get from fish oil, or, or they'll start with fish oil, or they'll start with pioglitazone. You'll start with all of those at, at the beginning. You could use TA1 as that same uh, factor, bringing down inflammation before you start with the binding. And so that's probably where I would start is give them, put them on a pathway to getting calm their inflammation, calm down, and then start them on the pathway of removing the toxins. You have to get out of exposure. This is the problem. You know, in order to get out of exposure, most people either have to move or change jobs. Yeah, right. Remodeling is so expensive. But But you know what? But in all honesty, sometimes it's just changing your lifestyle and the foods that you eat, really. It can be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of people, if you start to pay attention to the food you eat, you'll find out there's lots of insulting things in the food that you're eating. Exactly. Especially in blue cheese. Mmm. I love blue cheese too. Gorgonzola. <laughs> I'm Italian, so we like gorgonzola cheese. Exactly. Um, so, <laughs> excuse me. Um, is is the, oh, here's the next question. I'm sorry. Is there a peptide protocol that you've used with patients exposed to toxic mold and active mold in their system? I guess it's kind of a duplicate question of that. And really, what you just said answers that. But what about LL37? So, yes. The first time I ran LL, so I had foot surgery. And when I came out of the foot surgery, I had uh, a toenail mold on mm -hmm. one of my, a couple of my toes. And they wanted me to take a pill for like a year to get rid of it. And I thought, this is stupid. I'm not going to do that, right? Well, but I just, happened to, I just happened to do LL37. I'm sorry. I just happened to do LL37 for other reasons. And that mold went away. Mm -hmm. So the, one, of the, one of the confusions with mold is that, that you actually have the mold in your system. In your case, you do probably have some sort of toenail fungus, but when you're talking about the inflammatory system that's involved in mold, we're not talking about mold necessarily living in your body. We're talking about your immune response to those mold toxins. So the brain effects and the intestinal effects and the mm. joint effects are all related to the toxin that that mold produces. It might be sitting across the room, but if it's spewing out that mold toxin into the room. Uh, and that's so interesting. So it's not inhabiting you. You're just being exposed to it. You got it. You got it. So um, the, some people are allergic to mold and that's a different <coughs> category of disease. But if you're specifically talking about SIRS, the chronic inflammatory response syndrome, there's a, a cacophony of, of peptides that we use. So I'm a fan of the RG3 nasal spray. I really like the VIP. You have to use that later in the treatment plan for. So you really need a mold specialist who knows how to stepwise treat you. Um, and you got to remove your exposure.